Hello, ladies and gentlemen of the gaming community. Um, this is uh, my report from the uh, Pro Tour Qualifier Columbus uh, that occurred last Sunday. Uh, went down there and uh, didn't didn't do so hot. Um, I think I had a decent pool, maybe rate it like a, a six or a seven out of ten. Um, I think I made the best. I, or best deck I could, uh, but like I said, I, I uh, went uh, went three and five, so uh, really not that good. And probably a lot of people are saying, "Well, why'd you even do all the rounds?" Um, but I, that's one thing I wanted to address. Is uh, I think with new Planeswalker points, people kind of take for granted, um, you know, that you should actually stick in because I mean, where else are you going to get a five times multiplier? Um, but uh, you know, here is. The cards I didn't play, um, as you can see, there was uh, there was some strong blue. You know, they uh, down here. I had uh, you know all these cards I like right here, uh, but not not strong enough. And then the white was actually pretty pretty strong as well. Um, you know, getting all of these guys. Definitely some cards I wanted to play. Uh, but I still didn't think it was the strongest. And white or green had the mare and the enchantment, and I was just so excited to see it and wanted to play it. But uh, the rest of the green was pretty bad, uh, pretty bad green. And uh, no really good artifacts. Uh, this is somewhat questionable if I could have played that, um, but I still don't think it's the value. I think I have a really good curve and. Really don't want to be messing around with um, equipments. I uh, just want to try and aggro out. And as you can see, it's some lands. But uh, yeah, so these are the black cards I didn't play. Um, yeah, I think I think that was correct. I thought about playing one or two of these because of the I was such an aggro deck. Um, the Ridge Wolf I, I do like, uh, especially when you're playing Werewolf because anything with the um, an ability on it can allow you to uh, do something instead of doing nothing and still flip your guys. Um, I had two bumping the knights, and I think that is good for an aggro build um, in hindsight. Um, but then the rest of this was not that good. Uh, so here's my deck. I think it was pretty good. Uh, obviously, you always want to see a waif. Uh, Neo Knight, uh, you know, it's pretty good, and I think I, I still I think it's very play to play it, but. Geez, if I could count the number of times that you know I played this turn two, and then you know they, on their turn they they drop a dude that he basically runs into and dies. Uh, Interloper was great. Uh, Village Ironsmith, pretty good. I, I, I know some people criticize it because it does have the one toughness, but I will say that hey, if you they if they have to deal with your two drop, or if you know if it's affecting the board, I think that's a pretty good thing. Double Ghoul Razor is amazing, and I'm gonna jump right to the Forge slot because Cultus with Double Ghoul Razor, uh, that loop just gets silly. It only got to happen once, uh, but still pretty silly. Watch Keep, awesome. Um, I'm really a fan of guys that have um, you know big big toughness in this format. I think that's uh, a big help, and then it becomes very aggressive, which this deck wants to do as well. Obviously the air, give them plus one plus one counters to my vampires. I think I had six vampires. Um, so that's real good. Noble, he was definitely an all-star. Um, my deck has a lot of uh, ways of, uh, you know, letting things die and then they come back. And, and uh, you know, also I, I, uh, I, I think it just, it works really good. It's, a, it's more of a tempo thing than what you may uh, see. But I think obviously people like that. Um... Fence Snake, probably a lot of people don't like the one toughness, um, but as you can see, I have the double ghoul razor, um, and uh, and also, oh yeah, the the chant. So the chant. So I had five zombies, six six vampires. Uh, so that's why I played him, and then also he, uh, um, you know, he can be a real big threat if I, you know, if he's the only thing left on the board. Um, double ghoul. These are great. I mean, uh, it's just it's a solid uncommon, I would say. Um, and again, it's a zombie, so that's why I played it. This guy, not near as good as I thought he would be. Um, <laughs> to be quite frank with you, I, I've been misplaying this uh, unintentionally 
uh, for several weeks now. Uh, I don't know if I just didn't really read it or what, but I always thought it was if I controlled it as a human. Um, but it's actually if my opponent does. Uh, so I apologize to anyone that may see this and say, hey, he played that wrong against me, because I didn't realize it either. Um, not that this deck has a lot of humans, but four, I think. Uh, still, uh, not near as good, because it's so conditional. Um, but because I think I have the vampire air and you know a couple other things like that, I think that it does make sense. Uh, this guy, again, vampire, makes sense to play. Um, the, the Scourger of the Gear Reach is, is really great. Um, I really just find that I've never played him and really been dis disappointed. And it's not like it's like when it comes into play, that's when it happens. Um, it's just continuous of however many uh, creatures your opponent has. Uh, so I just thought that was really, that's a really good card. Um, just, it's always good, pretty much. Um, usually ends up being like a 7 7 they gotta deal with, and no one likes to deal with that. So, uh, obviously, Mythic Demons, always good. Um, he, uh, you know, I only, I seen him probably about four or five times on the day. Um, but obviously, a great card, don't really need to discuss it. Again, another great card, don't really need to discuss it, Devil's Play. Um, it's great. I mean, to have a fireball that you can recur um, is just really amazing. A couple cards that I, you know, obviously play dead weight. Dead weight's a no-brainer. Victim of Night. I think a lot of people will think it's pretty narrow, but you know what? I I have not found a deck that doesn't run a you know uh, a non-vampire, non-werewolf, non-zombie. Like they all run it, you know. And and you could always side it out, I guess. But I think it's it's a removal, so you play it. It's instant. Um, I'm only two colors, so double wax not a big deal. I think it's a good card. You play it most of the time. 99% of the time, probably. Uh, two cards that I was very unsure going. Not unsure. I didn't. I didn't think they were very good. I I didn't play them going into this event. Um, but after I saw how aggro my deck was, how it curved out, um, I thought it was definitely to play. So bump in the night. You know, basically you're looking at six damage. Um, so you know, if you can if you can aggro through for the first fourteen, uh, and then deal that six. Uh, you know, when you play this, people are like, "Well, there we go." He pretty much has the game. Uh, so I don't. I definitely don't think I'd play the second one that I got over here. But one of them, not so bad. You know, because it is you know six to flash it back as well. Uh, but then to the Nightbird's clutches, I. Like I said, I, I've passed on this card in draft. Um, I just don't think it's that good. But with vampires, vampires want to get through. You know, you got the plus one, plus one, the plus one, plus one, uh, plus one, plus one, uh, if they get through. Uh, Fen Rotting Snake, it, you know, being a 5 1 for that to get through. Um, just a lot of reasons where it's going to work really well. Lots of times they only have two guys on the board, so basically it's. You know, it's it's tap down their cre all their creatures and get through. Um, so I found this is really good, and you can do it twice. So I mean, it's like two turns that you're going to be coming through for, um, you know, for for the damage. So um, like I said, it was pretty good. I think it had a good curve to it. It was aggro, um, but you know, we we're also at a a uh, eight round Pro Tour qualifier sealed event. So you're going to run into some pretty ridiculous decks. I started off two and zero. Oh. Um, then got paired to get up against the guy from my local area, and uh, he just had a completely broken deck um, that just it just wrecked me pretty quickly. There was just so much value there. I mean, he's running six rares, six good rares, and uh, just wrecked me. So I uh, got the mana base. It was pretty straightforward, um, but uh, you know I had fun. It was a really good thing. Uh, it was really fun. Like I said, Planeswalker points, you know, I think you should not drop from these events. Where else are you going to get a five times multiplier? Um, but, you know, a lot of people are kind of used to that old habit of, like, I should drop if I'm, you know, if I'm out of contention. Um, I liked it. Uh, I think it was a good start. Um, I think I built what I, you know, should build. Um, but, you know, with these things, you got to be good. you got to be lucky. Um, you gotta you gotta build the right deck. you got to get the right matchups. There's a lot of, you know, there is going to be luck involved, and that's one of people's complaints. Uh, with PTQ, but it's very fun, so I enjoyed it, and I'll be going to many, many more, giving you guys updates. I greatly appreciate if you favorite, like, subscribe, um, all those things. You know, encourage me to keep on doing this, and I'll see you guys later.